66 million years ago, a ruthless murder was committed. All dinosaurs were killed. And we've known for the last couple of decades that an Everest-sized asteroid hit Earth, devastating the planet and causing a mass extinction. A simple impact theory, that's it. Or is it? Well, dinosaurs' descendants, birds, say our ancestors didn't live such a quiet life even before the bloody asteroid. In the last few years, new evidence has popped up, suggesting a second murderer, kinda in the form of a liquid asteroid, but far more dangerous. It hit Earth on the opposite side of the planet. Let's find out what was going on. So, Earth was barely recognizable back then. It was the last days of the Cretaceous, one of the hottest times in Earth's history and much more humid. Gigantic animals were everywhere. Pterosaurs filled the skies. Huge marine lizards and long-necked monsters up to 15 meters swam in the oceans. And on land, basically everything larger than one meter was a dinosaur, ruling the planet for over 150 million years. But then they were wiped out. All these majestic creatures disappeared in the blink of an eye, geologically speaking. How? Sure, a big asteroid hit Earth around that time, but was it really the cause? Or did it just show up at the wrong time and get blamed for everything? Some recent science suggests that before the asteroid struck, another dangerous nightmare might have been part of the chaos. The ancient continent of India, before crashing into Asia, hosted something ominous. The Deccan Traps, a volcanic region a thousand kilometers wide just waiting to cause chaos. The whole disaster started off quietly. About 800,000 years before the asteroid hit, the Deccan Trap started releasing around 10 million tons of CO2 and sulfur dioxide every year. And it just kept going. For half a million years, these emissions just built up in the stratosphere, getting nastier by the day. Fast forward to about 300,000 years before the asteroid, and the Deccan Traps were like, hold my lava, baby. They started erupting. This wasn't a normal eruption. It was a lava flood, releasing a steady flow of massive amounts of poison and lava. India took the first hit, with toxic clouds choking the life out of the continent and rivers of magma setting off massive wildfires turning the once vibrant land into a graveyard for Indian dinosaurs. After hundreds of thousands of years of non-stop volcanic activity, the catastrophe went global. The planet heated up, with oceans warming by at least 2 degrees centigrade in just 100,000 years. Sulfur in the atmosphere caused acid rain, while CO2 acidified the oceans and killed plankton. The Deccan Traps erupted massively, spewing trillions of tons of magma and deadly gases for thousands of years, devastating everything in their path. Earthquakes and tsunamis shook the continents, dealing the final blow to a once magnificent world. As food chains collapsed, some of the last dinosaurs likely perished vomiting toxic foam amid acid rain. Then it was over. Intense eruptions calmed down. However, while the Deccan Traps were killing dinosaurs, on the other side of the world, an asteroid 10 kilometers across crashed into Earth, delivering the final blow for poor animals. Imagine the dinosaurs on the opposite side of the world barely holding on for dear life. We made it through the storm, guys! Hell nah, here is the meteor. It is just a giant rock, bro. Chill. I think we are done. Seventy-five percent of all species perished. Including most dinosaurs, except for birds, the only dinosaur that survived. But scientists have been debating for years who exactly delivered the fatal blow. 
Some argue that volcanism wiped out all species before the asteroid, leaving nothing for the asteroid to finish off. On the other hand, there are those who insist that the asteroid was the real killer, claiming that without it, the dinosaurs would have likely survived. The cool thing about the meteor impact theory is it was testable, and it passed the tests. There's a global layer of impact debris, the presence of a chemical element called iridium, which is abundant in meteors in the geological record. This layer is found exactly at the point in time dinosaurs disappeared from the fossil record, also known as the cretaceous paleogene boundary. And also, there's a Chicxulub crater in Mexico, a whopping 200 kilometers wide and 20 kilometers deep. The energy it released could shake a planet like a ragdoll, billions of times more powerful than the nuclear blast at Hiroshima. So, no doubt, the asteroid hit and devastated the planet just as much as the volcanic eruption did. But the problem is, we don't actually find dinosaur bones right at the iridium layer. I mean, if the asteroid really wiped them all out, shouldn't there be fossils of them right there? That's what some paleontologists would still have you believe. Nobody will be able to prove that the dinosaurs all died as a result of the impact, unless someone finds a dinosaur that was fossilized who lived at exactly the same time as the extinction event. That's extremely unlikely. So, maybe they were all dead, and the impact just happened to incinerate their corpses. Picture this, you walk into a room, find a dead person on the ground looking all pale, and there's a bullet hole in their chest. Now, was it the heart attack that got him, or the bullet, or maybe both? The killer's long gone and there are no witnesses. Just like with the dinosaurs, it's hard to say for sure what did him in. Sure, the volcanic activity might have been slowly doing its thing, but that meteorite impact? That was like an instant death sentence. But we know that most of the major extinction events were possibly caused by volcanic activity, especially the Great Dying. The Permian Extinction, which exterminated nearly all complex life on Earth 250 million years ago. There are no iridium anomalies associated with this event, and it was apparently caused by excessive volcanism, which led to major changes in the Earth's climate, resulting in repeated and successive die-offs of life. So, the volcanists have a good point in that most of Earth's notable extinction events were probably not caused by meteorite impacts, which forces impact theorists to explain why the KT impact was so different. So, my final point is this. Most dinosaurs died from volcanic activity hundreds of thousands of years before a giant meteor attack. The meteor then incinerated half the world's forests, caused global darkness for years, and triggered devastating global warming that wiped out the remaining life. You know what? The asteroid did a good job, because without it, YouTube wouldn't exist, you wouldn't be watching this, and I wouldn't be talking. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something or had some fun. If so, please give it a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe and stay smart.